How's it going, guys? I just wanted to share the performance of the Coyote and Javelina off-roaders today. I've been testing them off the beaten track, and I couldn't find... I found a lot of top-speed videos, but I couldn't find anyone just testing the off-road handling and durability. So, as you can see here, I've, I've got them ready. They're a bit scuffed up, but you know, that'll happen when you're testing, and we're going to start with the Coyote. And basically, we're just going to see how fast you can get off this stretch of road here off the map. Out the middle of nowhere. Top off-road speed. And then we're going to go really off-road. Like, this is an off-road road, but I'm going to go off-road, off-road after that. Because so I wanted to see if there was a difference, and none of the guides were really testing it. They're all just on asphalt. And the handling is different between off-road and asphalt. You know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. Hopefully this uh, bit of damage doesn't affect the top speed, but seems to be handling fine. And I will do some turning circle tests and hopefully uh, drifting tests. So let's see how fast we can get. 200. It's faster. It's faster off-road. Yeah. <laughs> it was hitting 200. Come on, come on, come on. Or was that because there's a hill? Oh, physics. 200. 200. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Okay. So I don't think it's going to go over 200. 199, 200. Now we're going to go off-road and just see how the suspension handles some jumps. So you can see here the off-road speed is considerably reduced. Around 160, 150, 1... Yeah, it moves around. And one thing I will share is I thought these cars were a bit more durable than they are, but bits fly off. Like, if you go off any small bumps in the road that send the car in the air, like this one here, they will have your car falling apart. Like, they're not... Even the armoured... Even though they're armoured for off-road, they, they fall apart from from bumps and just like any other car really they can do it for a bit longer as you can see but they're not off-road proof uh, for lack of a better term so there you go and I'm just gonna set my marker start get a rough idea oh no it's gonna tell me to go to the road no but this is an off-road test Okay, now we're going to do the turning circle and semi-drifting off-road test, just to see what the fishiness is like, if there's how easily they can fishtail. And the grip is definitely much better off-road than on-road, believe it or not. So, off-road tyres are slippery on asphalt and not as slippery on dirt. So they've actually done that really well when they've built these cars. And now we'll do a U-turn test, get a bit more speed. I'll see if I can do a U-turn without sliding off into the bushes. So, 140, hook it, not bad, not bad. I could do that a bit better, but, you know, if you're going at a lower speed, much easier. The turning circle is good. Yeah, that is pretty good. One more thing to check as well is the turning circle like this without oh no it's gonna go into a donut anyway but that's how tight this is how you can do donuts <laughs> that's good 22 it's gone to 20 23 K kph donuts was that mph i don't know anyway back to the acceleration just get a, get a good feel for it before I switch to the other car. And then we'll, we'll go find a road and do the asphalt tests after, but I will show you how much more slippery these tyres are. So that, because you, you just saw it there, how, how it handled the road. But realistically, you're not going to be hitting these speeds for the majority of off-road travelling unless you're looking for the longest road to test it on, because you'll be in this kind of terrain, you know, the, you'll be on the bumpy terrain. So we're going to see which car handles it better. And obviously the Javelinas just drove off on me. But that's it there. And one other thing I'll note is that the way that it 
handles and fish eyes, like the fishy, the way it can spin out on asphalt, handles like a rear wheel drive. But if you check the drivetrain, it says all wheel drive. I don't know why. Like, it should just say rear wheel drive. Because it handles like a rear wheel Anyway, uh, we're going to see if the uh, jet wheel is still beaten up, I'm going to call it. Has it gone and repaired itself? It's gone to the repair shop. You get time? Oh. So there it is. It's, it's all repaired. Nice. You can see what the off road flying bits. See what I mean by let me off road a bit. And you can already hear the power. This is also supposed to be an all wheel drive. And if I go to do a burnout, it lets me do it rear wheel only. I don't know if that's because the brakes are front brake. Uh, yeah, if they're front brakes or what, why I can't do a four wheel burnout. But anyway, let's go to the top off road speed test. I'm not mentioning the horsepower because it's not really relevant. It doesn't seem to matter because it, it's like a combination of the body weight characteristics, whatever they've done to tune these cars, changes, everything. So 190, can we get 191? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, on the hill, on the hill. Did they add enough physics in for that? Yeah. So anyway, there's that. And now we're going to go off road. You can see what bumps do to it. Oh, oh, okay. There we go. Alrighty. Come on. So you can see the off-road speed, if I can find a little bit more flatter of a stretch up this way, yeah, is roughly 10 lower, because it was, the, the Coyote was going between 10 and 70, uh, 150, 170, this one's going closer to, hitting a lot more, this one's going closer to gets up to 150 pretty quick but it doesn't climb over that easily you can see the handling how the bumps go this is what I wanted to see in a comparison video and if you can't find it do it yourself so check that out off-road handling and durability and yeah even though the uh, coyote was a bit more beat up you could see it didn't come on fire from all that testing that I did I will do more extensive testing, but I don't think it would be good to to do a whole video on how long it takes me to push bash it until it, it blows up. Maybe, maybe that would be another video. I don't want to spend this video doing it because it's a comparison. So yeah, you can see something fell off there. And just being an off-road car does not stop it flipping. It'll still flip if the bump is big enough. What was that? But yeah, this this terrain is just. No, oh, this one's on fire from the first. That was dangerous. And now we're gonna do the. Hopefully, it won't fly more. Testing this. Come down. Come down. And now we're gonna do the turning off-road turning test. So first, we'll try to fishy it a bit. See how it does that staying on the road so that's how you tell how well the handling is off-road is when I do this it doesn't spin out easily and I'm able to keep track keep on the road so I'm almost drifting pretty much not a full drifting test but gives you an idea I'm not pressing brake this is just left and right and accelerate so now we're gonna do a u-turn maybe at around a hundred speed it was a bit tighter, eh? That was pretty. That was pretty good. Try it again. Oh, that one slid out a bit more. That was at lower speed. Maybe it was just me. Try again. It's down here. Could be the fact that the road's kind of flat and kind of not flat, and I wasn't gripping enough dirt. No, it seems to spin out a lot better, a lot more at lower speed. So that's a bit weird. At high speed. It can do a good UE around 100. No, it can't. 
Maybe I was just lucky that time, eh? Or it was the way I was doing it. I was tapping, I tapped the space bar a bit more, eh? Try again. More space bar, more brakes. Yeah, I'm able to get it a little bit more tight. We only got up to 100 this time. Yeah, you can you can practice and get better at it. Not too different to the coyote, to be honest. Okay, I don't know how drifting would go. Anyway, I want to go test the uh, asphalt now. But you get an idea. the The off road speed is pretty good. Maybe even a tiny bit better. But the uh, the bumpy off road speed, I think, is much better with the could just be the terrain. I've gotten unlucky with this terrain. I should have picked a more flatter area to test this, but the coyotes seem to fly over the terrain a bit easier, but it could just be that this terrain sucks. I need to find a flatter stretch. Oh jeez, this is bad. This is a bad area to test in. I'm gonna go back to the road and Go, we'll go hunting for some flatter terrain. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Getting out of there. Oh, uh, no, I won't test the, the gecko yet. I'll save that for the end. Go back to the Fion so that you can actually see it blend apart too. But yeah, this is what I wanted to see on a video. Now I'm I'm, 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 I am the video. <laughs> so yeah. See that fishy? The acceleration? Much better. The acceleration is definitely faster on this car. Obviously it's got a high top speed, but you know, you can have a high top speed without high acceleration. It can take a long to get to its top speed. This one... Pretty good. Where's the mass? We'll do the off-road testing too. Where is some good off-road area? This is where we should have done the uh, the javelina. This area here is pretty good. It's like the kind of off-roading you'd randomly do, rather than the other bumpy mountain. We have a truck stop there. Okay, we need to test the javelina. So. But, you know, you can see for yourselves because the video's got play all and all that. Rewind. I want to see how the suspension and stuff ends. Across here. It's a good bit until I get to the road. So you can see... Maybe that's hugging the ground a bit better because there's a car weight on a flatter surface anyway. 160. There's the road. I don't want to go into that gutter though. There we go. 60-ish. Okay. Around 60. And back to the... Here. Why is it going up the road? <laughs> Oi. I'm here. So 160 is what I got to. Um, I mean, average. I saw 160 when I got up to speed. And just past these few bumps, it's this stretch here where we can see where they pick up some speed. And yeah, definitely get knocked around a lot more in this one. 160 as well for a shorter stretch like that. That wasn't too good, but much faster. I mean, did you see how quickly I accelerated? That felt much quicker. I'll go back. See if it gets to 160 again. 
I would set a waypoint, but it, it follows the road, so it doesn't matter. Uh, 150. Yeah, 160 is roughly what it hits, but it's flying around a bit. You know, the more test cycles you do, the better it will get. I'll also hop in a non-off-road car just to give you guys a, you know, one fifty. Oh, they're both hitting around the same speed. I mean, if I go along the roughly the same line. What's that? And let's just hop in a... Which one? I've got a motorbike. Really, it's only the helmet. Let's hop in be a good one for testing. Definitely slippery up. Look at that. I can feel it slide like when I haven't even hit the turning. 90, 100. <laughs> but it is a weaker car, so that could be it too. But the actual ride itself is not bad in a straight line. Um, the actual suspension and all that wasn't really miles different. It's just the speed's much lower because it's a slower car. I'll have to get a really fast car to test that off road handling and stuff. So, yeah, now we'll find a asphalt road so you can. There's not really much point testing this car, is it? We don't want to see that. Really? Make me run. Off road, on road. Is it a road? Kind of? A little bit? Half a road? Where's the closest? Alrighty. I'll show you what I'm. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean when I try to stay on the road. Unless so I'm doing the exact same thing as I did before, and it just slides like it's like wants to drift, but too much. It over oversteers a lot. Very hard. I have to tap it so much quicker. Like I have to let go. I can't easily. Yeah. I mean the U-turn test. For example, going up to around 100 and trying to do a UE will basically say it all. It just wants to fly. If I tap space a lot more, I can tighten it up though. So, not a deal breaker. Nice, it's not as tight, I couldn't get a really tight turn. Maybe fast. Gets traction once it hits, once it gets off road. So we need some wider asphalt to test that better. Just up here. This is a good thing about off road cars. Here we go. Check that out. This is what the drifting potential is too. So, handling may be worse. I mean, grip, you know, grip may be worse on on road, but for drifting, that's good. Yeah, let's, do, let's try to drift. Okay. okay, maybe not. Not with space palm. <laughs> you kind of just got to corner it. Oh, 
that. Yeah, it spins out really easy when you tap space bar. No, could not. It was working better when I wasn't using anything. Drift for me. It straightens up too quick though. Like, you can't do a long drift. No. It starts to, it just keeps spinning. So, drifting potential minimal. Uh, just because of the way the, the car grips the road once it starts sliding. It just gains traction again or it keeps spinning if I want to, like for example if I tap, I mean it would be good for, like, wait a second, it would be good for drifting in a area like this. Let's see if I can just drift it, like it's an actual turns to drift around rather than trying to drift left and right. Uh, trying to get it to drift in a straight line. I need... That was bad. I need some turns. Let's go all the way around. Help it does. Maybe. It's got potential. You just have to practice uh, the method for getting it to do it. And a better area. So. Come up with a lot of turns, but I don't want it to be like super tight. Yeah, I might be. Not round enough. Not round. Before I do that. Up the Javelina and finish with these U turny straight How easily it slides out and how easily it does the second row. Because I'll just. while we're here. Oh, it's grippier, for sure. I can control the, the fish. I can control that much better. So overall handling, I would actually put it down to this one. Overall, like on-road, off-road, balance, much better. Well, noticeable. They're, they're both good. You could probably drift a bit easier in the Coyote, but the Javelina... Now, the Javelina has, like, better asphalt acceleration or something. That was my bad. I'm going to try that uh, section again. I just drift through here. Oh, how is the space bar drift? I didn't test that. I gotta, I gotta do that again. Can I just start drifting with space bar? Has it got enough power behind it? Up on these turns. This is turning into a way longer video than I. Standard, but I'm testing a lot. Oh, oh, that is not bad. Check that out. Check that out. It's, it's not like a dedicated drifting game, obviously. Or a little bit of drifting. It's not bad, right? Bad boy. I don't think it has enough power to just initiate a drift on a anything short of a proper turn. Sounds powerful, but 
simple as that. You can see what I was doing there, like I was able to kind of straight line drifting pretty easily. Gliding, whatever you want to call it. Spacebar does that. Does not spin out as easily as the coyote. Sure. Like I'm tapping spacebar for some of these. Tapping it too much just kind of slides sideways and stops the car. Like it doesn't tap it and then you're in a continuous drift, but. Get a feel for the car though, you can see from this video how, how I'm able to maneuver it. Uh, it might give you a good idea. Look at all this fake traffic. Lies. Sorry. Road drifting, can it? Too many bumps. Ah, anyway, get an idea. We need to go to that better area that I'm going to teleport to. See what the turning angle drifting is like. There's actually a nice. I hope there's a. See, they're not round enough. I want a circle. This is going to be really hard. There's not really that many circles, though, is it? It's either here or here. Start again, we're gonna go back to Coyote. This will do both, eh? What if they go into like a Probably won't get that much drifting on these bands. I might just end up crashing on the mountain. Oh, almost. It starts to spin out too quickly. Oh, look at this, it's so slippery. I can't even. Uh, like, I, I do play a few racing games, but jeez. It's a new type of racing, it's um, drifting parkour. It doesn't just keep sliding like you want it to. It's just I think it's just the, the game or the car. One or the other. Maybe this, this car would be good for off-road drifting. Uh, if I go to the off-road drifting area. Oops. Oops. Oh, 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 okay. Let's get away from those. Back up, back up the mountain. Let's get carried away anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Nice looking looks. Alrighty. Oh, that was a bit, was a bit better. Seems it just 
does it without any spacebar input, like or or reverse. Like I'm not tapping anything other than the directionals. Oh no, I'm tapping reverse. Sorry, I was just doing it without realizing. I'm tapping it to help it get into the uh, drift. Yeah, I tap spacebar then too. But I'm still going a bit too fast. Like the acceleration, I need it. I need to ease up on the acceleration, but the car just starts stopping straight away. Yeah, let's, let's just keep going. We need more bend. That's just too narrow uh, to really test. I mean, too. Not enough bendy. More bendy. Weird at higher speeds, I can do that fish eye thing a lot easier. Fish, fish tail. Do fish tail. Oh, thank goodness there's no, there's no railing. I thought there was railing all the way. I hope so. Goodbye. Tail. Some people watching this video, it's like, what is he doing? It's the car, okay? Like, when you accelerate, I'm holding W down the whole time. Once it starts sliding, it'll just stop. Like, and straighten out. Like, it'll... It doesn't want to keep sliding. Couldn't even get into the drift that time. Maybe the acceleration is too good. Because when you go downhill, your acceleration goes up, like it's going really, picking up speed really quick. I think that's why the uphill in the other section of road was felt a bit better. Anyway, we'll know for sure. Uh, yeah, no, it just slides into the railing because it, it's too slippery. This is too steep for it. Like low speed drifting. You can drift under fifty. I'm gonna try that. You can find the secret to drifting in this game. Keep it under sixty. <laughs> I'm just confused. Ah, just the hill. Uh, that's enough of that. I probably feel more like drifting if I don't look at it. actually felt a lot better in first person, even though it wasn't probably fully drifting if I was in third. Ah. Okay, let's just try the other car. I have to do that first. Do more of that. One. Still slides a bit too much from the hill. Like the hill gives acceleration downhill is Space bomb lot. Those they do handle fairly different. Oh well. Maybe it's because the hills I should be doing on flat turns. So I don't have to factor in the 
the kill physics so much. Oh, that was sick! Okay, so drifting works better in first person? Or is it just that I'm used to driving first person sim games? Ah, oh, no, over here. Ah, uh, no, that did not. Can we retry that? That bottom one, though, that was pretty good. I don't know how what I was what the car was actually doing, but it looked good in first person. Just that corner's too tight. I need to have like practice this many times to get it perfect. Go to the less tight turn of the road up here. Right, gotta get it to navigate the way over here. But yeah, even just by the motor sound, you can get a feel for which car you'd prefer. You're gonna drop your ideas on something. Especially if you're not using any glitches and you're grinding it all the part. You don't want to ask me what. Hey. You see how they gain traction really quick? Oh, I had to space one more. No, no, that's scary. Yeah, see if you do it too much, it is really not made to... It's not user-friendly drifting, is it? Like, it won't just slide if I just tap space bar without the acceleration. Or will it? Is that the secret? You know, some games do it differently. Right up here. Okay, when I let go of all the keys, it slides. I was not expecting that. I literally had my hand off the key when it when I took those at speed anyway. Yeah. <laughs> if I let go of W don't accelerate and I just like almost don't touch anything it'll just start sliding once I hit the initial are you serious yeah if I start tapping stuff it ruins it <laughs> alrighty guys we gotta test that now may have found the secret to drifting in cyberpunk minimal input so initiate your drift, and then, you know, like, it'll straighten out, but you just let it slide without touching anything, and it'll drift. Curious? Let's go back to those tight turns. <laughs> oh, that was sick. Could just be with this car, though. Like, I, I haven't tested both cars, so obviously, I don't know if that's what will happen in the Coyote. We are going back. Again. Yeah, 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 that's what it does. You, you literally initiate the drift, let go of all the buttons. So, you know how you normally would press like your space bar and you accelerate the angle that you want to get it on and it starts drifting? In other games, you'll have to keep inputting something like accelerate out of the corner. Um, but you don't normally just slide perfectly. Uh, downhill, the downhills ruin it. but. Uphill, I'll see if it'll do it again. So no, now, knowing that it needs minimal input, it's a bit weird though. Like, I'm used to accelerating in a drift. I guess you don't accelerate when you drift, eh? Like, proper drifting. I mean, you do, uh, it depends.
less input. Good. Okay. Hills, downhill, ruins it. I'm used to uh, drifting in first person. Oh, too, too much. That that it's hard. But yeah, I, I, at least I'm getting the idea how it does it, what initiates and keeps it drifting instead of trying to press anything to control it. Just let go. So we need um, we need some. In here might be good, but it's just like a grid. This be the best place. Could be painting the terrain part. I just, I really want to try that method uh, just with the parody now, now that I have an idea of what the game is doing with me. I play normal racing games and drift in them, like simulation, but I don't play dedicated drift games. I'm not an expert on drifting, or in real life drifting, I don't do that. So forgive me if I'm planning anything wrong, just to do with game drifting that I'm trying to figure out how it works in this game. Oh, that slid out so easily. Yeah, less input. Check that out. I had to accelerate halfway through the corner, but I mean, I would have had to if I did it properly. Yeah, but see there, it just got air and it flew. It had no traction. Not hugging the ground. Uh, yeah, see when it got air, like it jumped a bit. That was too steep. Need some. Need some more drifty type angles, type of thing. This is a different route, like semi off road though. Probably affect the. Yes! I don't know. I have to test it more. What is with this glowing water tank? Nah, it's not gonna work like this. It, it wants to tighten up, like, straight away. That wasn't bad. Like a wider uh, donut, but, I mean, does that better? What does that look? Like? Feeling dizzy yet? Yeah, see, I can't do the same thing there. If, it, if it's a constant turn, it'll do it. But if I just try to tap it into a turn, it, it spins out. Try uphill. No, 
about pretty much speed. Definitely harder to initially with the uh, coyote and not spin out. Yeah, see, it gets air too easy. The uh, javelin, javelina wasn't doing that. So yeah, um, my opinion of the better drift car, just from that limited testing, but take my word for it, is the javelina, not this one, the other one. Do need more guns. It is different. It's not the same as all games. You can do it though. You can with enough practice. I think you could you could get really good at drifting. Just I'm not sure how it works. That's all. This particular type. It's probably a drift game that this is like got its fundamentals from. That people who have played that would be really good at drifting in this. Going sideways enough, it is hard to do the drift sideways. Ah, oh, so you've got air there too. Not even really drifting if it's just sliding a tiny bit. Drifting should be almost sideways. Anyway, this is more testing. I just wanted to show people what the cars are like. So it doesn't matter how crappy I am at it, it, trying to do, trying to drift or not. It's just, this is what I wanted to see, which car handled better and which one spun out. Uh, the Coyote definitely spins out a lot easier than the Javelina. And see which one can do this test Okay, this one's harder because I can't do it. I can't. Oh, maybe with spacebar. I was using just diagonal tapping the uh, for the coyote because maybe it's a lighter car. But tapping in space bar kind of works. Just need more practice. Ah, it's, it's hard to get even one rotation in this particular test. It is getting a bit more sideways though. But as I've said, like, I was able to drift better with it. Get a bit more angle on the uh, journey routes. It's not on this kind of tight. It's just, it wants to do a U-turn as soon as I start tapping it too much. Well, enough the acceleration to keep the spin off. But for shorter angles, like if it was, if that was just like a normal half turn, it does it a lot better. Like not all the way around 360, but like a 180. It it's sideways and slides really good. Okay, uh, one more thing I wanted to do as a bonus, just because this is already going to be a one hour video, is the budget car that a lot of people wonder, should I just keep saving for the you know, expensive cars or is it worth getting the budget car? And this is a treat because the 
the minor testing I did when I first purchased this, it had really, really good um, suspension. And like for taking those little bumps, it actually takes those bumps on the in the desert better than the, the long cars. Uh, and I was expecting it to like flip and get chucked around a lot more. It does get get air, but um, it does it better. It takes those bumps better. And the other thing was this car might be good for drifting from the small off-road testing I had with it because of its acceleration. You can see the acceleration is pretty good, it just doesn't have as high top speed. See that? See it up. What is that? A weapon? I don't know if it's going to be minimal user input on this one, so the acceleration is different. Oh, maybe. Put that hard turn a bit better than, than the Javelina. Because it's at a lower speed. Maybe we practice. Maybe we practice, but that was minimal input slide just then. I'm sure someone's going to get offended by this video, but I don't know. Uh, can we off-road test here just a little bit? See what I mean? See? See? See how good it is? One sec, I want to show you. Hear that? It's got torque. See the suspension? What I meant, it's got like a lot more, a lot more um, distance travel. Wants to slide. Good luck. And this is the gecko, it's only like 22 22k eddies. No. Being a bad driver. What about city driving? Can we get some city drifting in? Not if there's a uh, the fall on. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Get 
I'm not doing that on purpose. It doesn't have the acceleration to really come out of the longer slide. Not bad though, it's the price. This bridge. Put this out. Be nice. No, the garbage. Anyway guys, hope that gave you an, an idea of what the car's handle um, instead of just top reads. And thanks for watching. See us in another video for another day. Have a good one.